Hi everyone, welcome to another Alia Graphic Creator Chat. I'm Yurgi from Kingston Libraries in Victoria, and today I'm very excited to join Sean Keenan um, in the arena. So he's the brain behind the series Extreme Champion Tournament, where uh, gladiators have to fight for their freedom. Anyway, let's meet the slave master. Hi, Sean. Are you a tough master? Uh, I, I don't know if I have to, uh, if I am, mate. I'll, uh, I'd have to ask the other creatives I, I work with whether I'm a, a tough master or not. So um, I like to think that I'm, I'm, you know, cool, calm and collected and I, I don't um, crack the whip too often. But, um, yeah, I, I won't say no. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. A benevolent master, then. Yes, that I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now, um, for those who don't know, who is Sean Keenan? Can you tell us about yourself, what you do? Yeah, definitely. Well, um, I'm 39 years years old. I live in uh, Gisborne in regional Victoria. So I live here with my, my wife and my four four-year-old little daughter, Peaches. Um, by day, I work uh, um, a normal a normal job, but uh, by night, I um, own and run uh, the graphic novel publishing company called Comics to Movies. Um, I created that in 2007, and the publishing side first came into effect in 2013. Uh, when I'm not doing that, um, I love watching movies, uh, different TV series, and um, uh, don't hold this against me, but I'm an avid uh, Hawthorne supporter, so I, I do uh, make time to to watch them play uh, each week, but they've been driving me mad this year, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so you, you're like a superhero. You've got your day, uh, your day life <laughs> and then your night life. Yeah, well, I don't know whether I'd call myself a superhero, but um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a difficult industry to to break into, um, publishing and uh, and creating uh, and the creative industry as a, as itself. So, I've been firm that you know I want to get to a point where I can do this full time, and uh, that means having a good business structure, uh, having distribution, and um, getting this out there to as many places as possible uh, rather than just selling it to uh, like comic conventions or, or things like that so um, it's about having a catalogue of books and, and really being able to speak to why you know libraries or, or stores or, or those type of places should actually stock um, you know what, what I'm creating. Yeah now did you read comics as a kid and and if so like what kind of comics what drew you to them? Yeah, well, I I always read comics as a kid. I, I struggled to read uh, a bit as a as a youngster. Um, so it was actually my mum who um, introduced me to, to to comic books. So she was trying to find ways to entice me to to read and to improve my reading skills. And um, you know, back back when we uh, when I went to, to primary school we had to read a book each each night or, or each week and then report back to the the teacher what we what we read and you know I was really struggling with that so my mum bought me my first x-men and spider-man uh, comic book so for me I really enjoyed it because I loved the artwork uh, it was uh, much easier to, to follow for, for me and um, being able to see and then understand what the words were made it also uh, easier for me. So it wasn't until I was much older that I realised that I was a visual learner, um, and uh, it's it's been a real big passion of mine now um, to to really uh, talk about comics, talk about graphic novels, and how they can be used as a tool to improve reading, to um, improve storytelling, and that they're just not you know um you know flip books or um you know children's stories or anything like that they're actually a really powerful uh, medium that can be used to to um you know help people like myself so yeah and that actually that, that that's one of the things that i'm really passionate about as well i mean i have a background in media studies 
and and in teaching actually as well. So uh, media literacy is one of the things that I, um, I, I'm really passionate about. And I feel like we comics are a perfect medium because they're great for struggling readers because you can infer meaning from, from the art. Um, and uh, you're also not overwhelmed with so much text. But at the same time, they are great for advanced readers as well because uh, the interaction of text and, and, um, and the art, and also sometimes not the interaction, but the juxtaposition of them actually creates uh, really complex layers of, of, uh, of decoding that the reader has to do. So uh, for advanced readers as well, they can be uh, really challenging texts. And, um, and so, you know, you can use them for both for, uh, struggling readers, but also advanced readers. So, yeah, and I think with um, uh, like really good storytellers and artists, they can put subtle things into into books that, as you said, a novice reader can read and and would miss and not interpret. But then with that advanced reader, there's a lot more um, in in a in a graphic novel than just just uh, the, the the pictures type of thing. Those layers and and um, yeah, I think that's what I enjoy about the medium. And, you know, uh, comics really got me into reading. So, you know, my love and passion for, for reading. I'm a big Star Wars fan, so I've got all the expanded books and all that. If it actually wasn't for, for, for comic books, I, I don't know whether I would have actually, you know, been much of a, a book reader or, or a writer or, or gone down this, uh, this avenue of publishing yeah. as well. I'm actually the same. Uh, I, um, uh, I'll just tell you briefly, I was the very last one in my class, in my classroom to learn how to read. The last one. The, the teacher and my parents, like they were beside themselves. Because my parents are both huge, massive readers. Uh, and they were beside themselves. Uh, so I was the very last one. But then when I learned, I learned really quickly because obviously I left it till so late that, that, that I was ready for it. Uh, and, and then, um, like within a year, it was the, uh, the opposite. Like they, they were pushing me to go out to the street to play with my friends, where, whereas I just wanted to read. And I was like, oh, but this book's really interesting. You know? <laughs> and, and a huge part of that was comics. And that's really what um, really got me hooked and then, you know, and then I wanted more, you know. Yeah. But, but yeah, it was really comics that really started it. And thankfully, I, I, was, uh, I was very lucky in that both my parents read comics. And they both lived in France for a few years. And, you know, so I, I was surrounded by them at home as well. So I've done a couple of um, conventions in, in France yeah. and that, that's actually quite a place that is quite supportive around that graphic novel medium and has been for, for quite a long time. So, you know, we're playing a little catch up here. So. Oh, yeah, it is it definitely like if you've been there, you understand what it is. I, I've spoken to a few people about it. I mean, you, you don't really know unless you've really been there. And my parents lived there for quite, uh, qu quite a few years. And, you know, the, the, the respect and the appreciation of, of the art uh, there is just amazing. And, you know, they, they are, they've been studied at university and taken very seriously for, for decades, like they've been, you know, all the way back to the 60s. Uh, so yeah, it's a completely different culture there, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so which uh, festivals did you go to there? Uh, I did um, three Spartacus conventions there. So they have a um, the uh, reunion of the TV series Spartacus. So um, yeah, because XCT is based uh, based on Spartacus uh, as one of the the main characters in it, so uh, yeah, I was able to go over there. I've been very lucky. Uh, the first two I, I went over um, as a as a guest, and the last one I took my wife over and, and worked at the at the at the show and did a little bit of a panel and and everything like that. So yeah, that's cool. 
Now, uh, what was the turning point for you where, you know, you were reading comics and you were studying or you were doing whatever. And then, you know, do you remember the time when you decided, you know what, I'm going to make comics. This is my calling. I actually do because um, uh, my wife or, or my girlfriend at the at the time, um, you know, she's quite a, a, a driven person, and I remember her sitting me down one one day and saying, like, you know, what what do you want to do with your life? What, where do you want to go? What do you want to do? And I'd always kind of fallen into to the jobs that I'd done. I'd never really um, put a lot of thought about what, what I wanted to do. And, um, you know, it was quite confronting and, you know, I, I got a little bit upset to begin with. And then I walked away and, and was like, okay, well, no, what do I, actually want to do what do I love and as I mentioned before I love comics I love movies I love tv and I was like okay what can I do that incorporates all those those type of things and in 2007 I, I came up with like a collectible business idea that, that kind of um and created comics to movies and that fell by the wayside and then kind of 2012 came along and I was doing some conventions and was surrounded by a lot of creative people. And, I, and I'm like, I've all had always read comics during that period. And I was like, Hey, there's a lot of people that do comic art, but there's not a lot of people that produce actual comic books and at a really high standard. And I thought, Oh, there's a nice gap in the market here for an Australian publisher to, to really step in and um, lift that game, um, lift that game up. And that's, that's where comics to movies was born. Uh, we printed our first comic in 2013. And uh, since then we've done uh, five single issues. Uh, we've got four graphic novels um, out. And then this year we've got another um, two graphic novels out and another couple of comics as well. So, um, it's been a been a long process, uh, but um, you know we're really excited over the next twelve to to twenty four months to to really see our, our brand explode in and and be in a lot more places. So that's awesome. Now, what are your influences now, and what series or creator do you look up to? Well, I've got a my, my um prized possession at home is I'm a big X Men fan. I, lo I love Gambit. So uh, in the the 90s, everyone will know if you're a comic fan that Jim Lee uh, did the the X Men. So I've got a, a um, poster with the all four covers um, as a lithograph. It's signed by Jim Lee, Chris Claremont, who was a writer, and Stan Lee. So that's my prize prized possession in my house so it won't surprise you to say that Jim Lee has been a big influence on on me um, I was a big Spider-Man fan so at that time it was Todd McFarlane um, and then since then uh, there's a, um, a Mexican artist called Herberto Ramos who I've been a, a really big fan of and he did series like um, Avengers Initiative which was born out of civil war and and um i thought that was quite an interesting storyline in what it would be like if you um made these kids with superpowers um sign up to the a military style um uh, you know camp type of thing so um so they've been my my influences creatively uh from the publishing side um you know doing classes and workshops and that i really look at, um up to a couple of publishers called comics tribe and scout comics so they've kind of come up from that independent um type of publishing and have really started to make waves in the u.s and and abroad they're now both in um the the, the publishing magazine diamond which is the major uh publishing thing for comics um so i've really taken a lot of their lessons and really look up to them to to see where i can go from here and how i can you know get my story in front of as many people as, as possible nice. yeah it, it must be really tough um you know starting um publishing co uh, comics here in australia it's, uh, yeah, there's not much of an industry or a market here, you know. No, and that's that's the biggest thing. So, I I, I think 
there's really no place for people to go if they want to learn about this this type of stuff and um you know my co-creator for, for terra olympus he's um done a lot of work within the school and the library industry in doing workshops to to let people know you know what you can do how you can create um comics and those type of things but the next step that i would really love to do is is be that place that once they do those workshops that they can come and actually you know publish something and get something out there and, and make that avenue into libraries into bookstores and and those type of things a lot easier um than it is at the is at the moment and, and as i said within australia there isn't really um a publisher or anyone that does that at the moment moment you know you've got school tastic which is fantastic in regards to children's books and everything yeah. um but i think there's a, a real gap in the market there for for someone someone like us um to to really go in and, and go to libraries look here's some really good books that have some really good um, morals that have some really good storytelling um that you know can you know produce all different types of learning outcomes yeah um that's a good mission to have <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one i approve this mission now, thank let, you <laughs> let's, let's start with Terra olympus um now which i have right here so there are two volumes, volume one and two, uh, so far right. And uh, uh, the second volume was published just recently. Uh, awesome work, by the way. I really enjoyed it. Now, I'm, I'm really, really enjoying the series. So what's Terra Olympus for those who don't know? Yeah, so Terra Olympus is our um, sci-fi series that's set in the future uh, where humanity is living aboard a space station that's called Terra Olympus. Um, our main character is a strong-willed female engineer that stumbles across a conspiracy and puts her in the crosshairs of a, of a bunch of uh, dangerous people. So um, it's got that sci-fi conspiracy uh, theory vibe. Uh, if people like the 100 uh, or the Expanse, it's, it's very much got that, um, that feel. So, um, but we're very keen uh, after doing XCT. I really wanted to have a, and I've got a couple of strong female characters in that, but I wanted the lead for this series to be a female character. Um, so Steve and my co-creator uh, on this on this book, um, he's done a great job in writing a really great um, story that, um, you know, I feel a lot of, you know, men and females can, can enjoy, so. Uh, how did the Kickstarter go? And when can we expect volume two to be available with library suppliers? Yeah, so we did, a, the Kickstarter went um, absolutely phenomenal, much better than we um, had ever an, anticipated. So uh, we had almost 400 uh, people support our, our crowd crowdfunding campaign um, so that let us raise enough not only to produce um, Terra Olympus volume two but we're already in production now for volume three of that and that will launch early in 2021 which is fantastic uh, we've literally just finished our fulfillment of that Kickstarter which is uh, I can see that you've got uh, yours so we finished that last week um, and we've now uh, just uh, sent off our books to um, our distributor and it should be available for libraries and stores um, in early December. Um, it does take a, a couple of months for all of the, the paperwork and all that type of stuff to go through from the distributor side. So um, as soon as that gets uh, ticked off, then, then it will be available for, for everyone. Excellent. So, uh, so towards the end of the year, we should be yep. able to get it for libraries. Excellent. Good news. Good news. I'll be waiting so that I can <laughs> order it for the library. Now, um, Extreme Champion Tournament um, uh, is perhaps your most successful comic. Uh, how did it come about? What's yeah, the story so there? 
Yeah. So yeah, so I'm pretty pretty lucky with um, XCT considering it was the first thing I ever created, uh, but it's the the number one selling um, independent comic book in Australia. So we've sold almost seven thousand copies of, of this uh, this series. Um, but really, it came came about when my two passions collided, which is um, the TV series Spartacus and uh, and the UFC. So. I was watching a, a, a John Bones Joan fight and it got me thinking about what it'd be like if there was gladiatorial combat today and who would actually win um, out of Spartacus and, and John Jones. So um, I'd always really wanted to create a, a comic and, and this was during that uh, 2012 and 13 period where I was like looking at the direction that I wanted to take comics to movies and um I thought, hey, let's bring back uh, history's greatest fighters and get them fight fight each other. Um, was a was an interesting concept, and and uh, you know, dipped my toes in the water of, of creating. So, um, yeah, it started started off with with that, um, but is now expanded into so much more than than just a, an action comic. Definitely, because. Um... It did start as just, you know, these kind of gladiators fighting action kind of thing. But now you are, uh, I feel like you are starting to develop that story and you, you, you're exploring all the themes as well. And I, I feel like Terra Olympus also has some interesting themes there. So, you know, what are the kind of themes that interest you and whether you see XCT going, you know, well, what are the things that you want to explore with this series? Yeah, um, I think, you know, as the, the story develops, um, the, this story is really about perception. So um, what does an individual believe is wrong or right in their own eyes? Um, so, you know, with social media these days, with um, what's going on in the world, there's always like, you know, the politics any of those there's always one side against against another side and this book really delves into you know history's greatest fighters are, are clones so how are they treated um by some people they're treated as second class citizens with no rights and and that type of stuff and reflects a little bit of what the social commentary is going on in the world at the moment um and that's heavily heavily influenced um i guess the writing and the creative direction of of, of this book um and also like that that x-men um type of thing so i don't want to, to slap people in the face with you know this is what I believe or, or this is what I think you should believe but it's a let, letting people come to their own assumptions and their own um, ideas of what they believe is is um, is uh, right or wrong so there's a, a couple of one of our anthologies that's available in the library system at the moment is about you know um, Achilles who walks into a police station and uh you know he starts to to, to kill a, a lot of the police officers and um you know that might sound quite brutal and an action and everything like that but if you, when you read the story he's like recanting his story and he's like well am i the bad guy you guys are the ones that are standing by watching us fight for the world's entertainment um you know, am I the bad guy or are you the bad guy? And it really, I'm hoping that these type of stories, you know, get people thinking and talking ab about these things rather than jumping up and down going, oh, this is right and this is wrong and actually, you know, letting them come to, to some of these realisations and and uh, ideas like I did growing up um, type of thing. I think these books are, are really are really meaningful and really powerful for for that you know that 15 to to 20 um mark and then you know everyone else can enjoy it as well and even yeah. sometimes younger than that but yeah these are the themes and that that i'm wanting to to explore our um, latest graphic novel breakout sees them outside of the arena and then again it comes on perceptions where you know, some people think they're doing the right thing. Other people think they they're doing the wrong thing. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, as you said, like it, it all kind of started, or uh, 
at least one of the central characters is uh, Spartacus. And that's a character that really lends itself really well with to this kind of thing, because his story is one of, you know, like the traditional, the old story is one of, you know, uh, the gladiators who were just disposable meat, <laughs> you know, uh, you know, standing up to the Romans and uh, for their freedom and for rights and for all that. So it's, a, a, it's, it's really interesting how the series has evolved. So I don't, I don't want to be a, a pessimist, but the, the other thing that's really driven me on, on this is that um, whether we seem to repeat our mistakes um, uh, as well. So uh, I'm hoping that, you know, by this, this type of book, you know, we kind of be a little bit more aware that, you know, yes, the UFC is cool, but we don't want to go to the next level where, you know, it starts to become, you know, much more violent and, and all that type of stuff that, you know, we keep some humanity and, and, and understanding around, you know, how we should treat others and that type of stuff. So. Excellent. So now uh, you're having a very busy year with Kickstarter, taking the opportunity of, um, well, we're on lockdown, uh, you know, coronavirus and all those things. Let's uh, get projects out. So we've got Terra Olympus, you've got XCT. Now, uh, what can you tell us about your next project, uh, Talos of Sparta, which should be launching soon? Yeah, so um, Talos of Sparta is our um, alternate history story. So um, our logline for that one is, um, after the death of his father, a young Spartan warrior is entrusted with a, by a miracle, mythical priestess to battle the monstrous army rising in the east. So um, what we're hoping to um, have this story tell is what it would be like if Sparta rose to power rather than Rome. And Sparta was never interested in um, actually conquering um, uh, anyone. They, they loved to fight, but they loved Sparta and they loved their, their home, but they were never a conquering nation. They never wanted to, to rule the, the world. So my idea around this was, well, what would the world look like if all of the native cultures um, were able to uh, progress and, um, you know, evolve without the, um, you know, Western culture side um, evolving. So uh, it's really interesting to me. I've always been interested in mythology and, and history and, uh, you know, I've been lucky enough to, to do a lot of um, Aboriginal uh, walks and, and talks in, in here in Victoria um, and learn about their culture. I've done a, a, a Native American um, stay in a, in a reserve in, in Texas um, and I've always found um, native culture to be quite interesting and kind of leads me back to, to that um, being understanding and trying to see things from both sides so um, this is yeah my, my, my chance to kind of go okay what would the world look like if um, you know uh, the, the Aboriginals ruled uh, the Pacific, if the Native Americans ruled uh, the Americans and, and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Sounds really cool. Um, I'm looking forward to it. So um, I'll, I'll be on the lookout for the Kickstarter uh, for it. Uh, now, um, you're the creator uh, of these things and you, I know that you've also collaborated with uh, a few different artists and <laughs> writers as well. Uh, like um, Stephen is also the writer for Terra Olympus with you. Um, uh, so what's it like uh, collaborating with others in developing these stories or developing your ideas? Yeah, I have to say I've been extremely lucky. Um, I've been surrounded by amazing, amazing creators. Um, you know, I cannot speak highly enough of, of the people that I've, I've dealt with and worked with, um, you know, and, and, you know, also be proud of that they've gone on and had um, some more success after working with me as well. But most of the, the collaborative 
collaborating works with us doing workshops or creative world building sessions to flesh out some ideas and story concepts and those type of things. And then really I just leave the people that I've brought in to do what they're best at. Um, that's the reason why um, I surround myself with great writers, with, uh, with great um, artists with great graphic designers with great letterers that I don't need to kind of hover over them and tell them how to do their job I let them um, do their job and it's always always fun to, to let people play in your sandbox as well and see what they can come up with you know what type of creative ideas that they have and um, you know I think the anthologies are the, the things that I really enjoy the most because you know, I think the last one we did, we worked with um, 10 different writers, um, uh, 10 different artists. Uh, then we had uh, seven different colorists and uh, then another three different litterers on top of that, just mm -hmm. for the, the one one project, which is, um, a, you know, amazing group of, of creators to, to work on, on one book. So, um, but then there is some joy, you know, with my XCT series, I've worked with with Ben um, and Alex, the the artist, um, for for the last few books now. And um, the more you work with someone, the more intuitive you get to each other. So you know, we seem to know what each other wants and and everything out a certain page or or story. And um, also, when you have people that are so passionate about the same project, um, everyone wants it to to do well so when there is criticism or um disagreements or all that it's only to make the project project better um which is always a, a great position to be in yeah yeah but, you know i i studied uh, uh, as i mentioned before i did media studies so i made some short films and i worked in other films and things like that and i always loved uh, that kind of collaboration, you know, um, but, um, but which can sometimes be tricky as well, you know, because people may challenge, uh, your idea as well. And, um, but yeah, uh, usually if everyone's on board, if everyone's on the same page, it can actually bring out the best out of everyone. So. Yeah, and, and I think uh, both Steve and I had, had workshopped how this would work if we uh, went out to workshops and schools and those type of things to show people that creative process and how they can to, to do this as well. But um, uh, we put stuff together, but COVID, COVID happened and, and uh, we haven't, haven't been able to, to showcase any of the stuff uh, yeah. or, or projects that we've, we've done. So, um, you know, I think libraries are getting more on top of doing things like like this as well. I've I've seen a lot of libraries do live streams, uh, live readings, and and uh, live classes as well. So um, yeah, it's definitely uh, something that I'll look at uh, in the future as well. Yeah, definitely, and we encourage um, we encourage libraries to to do that. You know, contact the uh, local writers and creators, and you know. When we can do it in person, do it in person. And if not, you know, there are things that can be done online. Um, yeah. And th this has been a tough year for everyone. But, you know, if, if you can help by getting a creator and getting them to do a workshop, even a digital one, that's, you know, go for it. Do it. It's a good thing. <laughs> All right. Now, how did you go about publishing these projects? Um, I mean, I... Usually, uh, you've been doing it through Kickstarter, which I imagine is a lot of work. It certainly looks like it. And then, you know, you distribute them to stores and library suppliers. What's, what's kind of the, the workflow there? Um, yeah, so I think um, what, what people might not realize is that in the comic and graphic novel world um, for actual comic book stores, there's actually only one 
one uh, distributor worldwide, which is uh, Diamond uh, Distribution. So when I first started creating um, XCT, I did look down the avenue of um, getting it distributed through through Diamond, but um, that's quite a hard uh, process. We did get accepted, but we just weren't able to produce enough content um, on the basis that they require to be able to keep keep up with um, the distribution that way. So we, I decided to kind of do something a little bit different, which was go down more the traditional book distribution avenue. So uh, we have um, a distributor called Woods Lane um, who distributes through um, all, all library suppliers um, in uh, uh, New Zealand and Australia. And they also um, supply um, Nelson, which does uh, all of the UK. And um, they also now have just started to do um, Canada and the USA, which is, which is fantastic. So the Kickstarter side, we usually do that to raise the funds for um, the printing costs because that's the, the, one of the most expensive parts of, of, uh, of publishing. Um, so we have the book practically completed prior to going to, to Kickstarter and then um, and that's how we're able to get them out so so quickly to, to our, our backers. So the first part of the fulfillment is we do all ourselves. So we will send that out to all of the people that back back our Kickstarters and then once that, that is done, we will then um, uh, whatever we've got left over or whatever extra we've printed will then ship, ship to our distributor who will then um, distribute those to, to all the different bookstores, libraries, and all that type of stuff. So I guess the hardest part from that is once it's with the distributor, is we do that manual call of, you know, hey, you know, um, this is who I am. These are the books that we, we produce. Uh, we would love you to stock that in your store or would love you, the library, to, to pick that up. Um, and then, you know, we, we've been able to build a good network of people to, to begin with. So when we make that call, they're like, yep, just let us know when it's out. Uh, um, like you were just saying before, which is, which is fantastic and, and we'll order it. Um, and then for those who don't know us, it is about going, okay, this is why you should, should pick up this, this book. This is who it's, um, uh, you know, appeals to. Mm. Uh, these are the reasons why it appeals to them. And then we also, like to provide um, some either social media or, or um, physical um, material that the places can use. So, um, you know, if we can make it as easy on stores or libraries to um, go, hey, we've got this this uh, new comic book by providing a little bit of social media um, uh, artwork or something like that, we try and try and do that as well. So. That's probably the hardest, hardest part of this whole whole job. You know, creating is fun and, and enjoyable. The Kickstarter is long and hard, but that that um, last part of distribution has has always been the the hardest part uh, part and the biggest hurdle type of thing. It's interesting to see also that uh, looking at sales data from last year and from, from the last few years, there has been a huge shift in terms of sales from uh, from local comic stores to uh, uh, to comics and graphic novels being sold in the book channel you know very interesting when they posted that sales data because they were like oh you know um it's not all doom and gloom in comics you know um uh you know they increased their sales but yeah when you actually deep dived into those those sales figures um, floppies had had dropped considerably a, a large amount of money. Digital comics had dropped um, a, a little less, um, uh, but it was that graphic novels that really bumped up um, the sales and and uh, that direct to market channels. And you know, um, it's also you know I use Kickstarter a lot. It's quite interesting to see how much money, especially during this COVID situation, how much money has been uh, pledged through through um, uh, self-published titles. And now you can even see larger um, publishers like Valiant, uh, Image, um, Scout Comics um, all use Kickstarter to um, get that first print run and out and then 
uh, the the direct to market after that. So yes, it's it's very interesting. The next five years, I, I think the you know whether local comic book stores are around or not, um, I feel they haven't probably evolved as much as they they need to, to be. Um, it's very daunting to go into a, a comic book shop and see, you know, several hundred floppies on a, on a wall and kind of have any sort of understanding um, of what you should read, what you should pick up. And then, you know, as great as some comic book shops are, the customer service side of it is a lot of people that, that run them love comics and are not necessarily either salespeople or or people that are able to um you know you know sell you know and upsell and all these little things that every other type of retail market you know needs to to, mm. to do i'm a macca's boy so from 14 and nine months i was told to would you like fries with that you know type of mm. thing so it's it will be interesting over the next five years how how long uh, comic, local comic book stores go, but you know, if people can support and and encourage them uh, to 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 support local and independent comic books as well, that'd be great. I full disclosure, I confess my sins. You know, I I used to be a floppy reader, but uh, yeah, I abandoned floppies. I only buy. Um, trade paperbacks and if possible hardbacks that uh, you know that's what i buy i like reading a long chunk of story um, and i think part of it has to um, i think part of it is because of where i grew up so you know in, in europe it's more the albums which is not as uh you know they're shorter they tend to be around 50 to 70 pages more more most of them you know but it's 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 usually a self-contained full story, and then you notice that that's what Terra Olympus and and yeah. XCT is. It's that that between that sixty and seventy page uh, book, and I think with Netflix and this binge type um, way, also with the younger generation, um, people want a lot more, and and I just don't think twenty four pages is is enough to kind of really tell a really good story to get people to the point where they're like, okay, I'm going to wait, you know, a month or two to, to get the next, next one. So. Now, uh, kind of, uh, coming to an end, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot, uh, about this. Who would you say was the best warrior in history? Oh, that's and you need to question. choose one. Um, you need to choose one. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have to go. I'm gonna have to go. Spartacus. I think um, not only was he most likely a, a great, um, a great fighter, but I could only imagine what type of presence and um, the way he spoke to to be able to get two hundred thousand people to follow him. You know, it's it's hard enough. To, to lead a team of ten people in a in a in a company, let let, let alone or in a group, let alone two hundred thousand people, um, I can just I really do can only imagine what his persona and everything must have been like to to have people go, man, I will fight next to this person, I will die for this this person. Um, yeah, that's so. I'm going to Spartacus. Good choice. I like it. I like it. <laughs> I, I, um, I love Vikings, so maybe I would go with, with Ragnar or someone like that. But, Ragnar. but, but uh, it, that is a really good choice. And I have to say also, I, I did enjoy the series, but uh, the Spartacus movie it has always been uh, Stanley Kubrick's movie has always been one of my all-time favorites. So good choice. <laughs> <laughs> Now, at the end, would you like to share two or three comics or graphic novels that you've read maybe recently or that you just want to recommend to others? Yeah, definitely. Um, the first one that I've just finished reading only two days ago was um, is called She. Uh, it's actually written by Australian um, writer Ryan K. Lindsay uh, and it's published by Comics Tribe. So it's a beautiful hardback um, uh 
graphic novel. It's uh, got beautiful artwork, a really nice setup story. Uh, had me quite interested the whole way, whole way through. So if you can get your hands on that, um, that's definitely one I would say to, to check out. Um, and the other one I've, I've read recently is um, Wordsmith Volume 2. So uh, that's uh, by a, a, a person that I create with uh, Stephen Kay. Um, so, you know, that's a really great um, steampunk style um, story. Uh, I feel like it's a really good all ages story as well. So I enjoyed it being, you know, 39, but I think it would appeal to, to a young audience uh, as just as much. So um, they're the two that I, I, I selected to, to recommend. Good ones. My kid loves uh, Wordsmith. Yeah. Ah, there you go. <laughs> He's read, he's read volume one and two several times, I reckon. Yeah, yeah. And I loved she. Um, really um, great story. And, and the edition is beautiful as well. Like the, oh, you've read really that as well? Great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. They've, they've done a beautiful, a beautiful job of that edition. It's just stunning, the whole presentation. I tell you, the, the one thing I will never ever get tired of is when I check a library catalog and my um, graphic novel is checked out or when I'm at a convention and someone goes, oh, dad, I borrowed that um, from the from the local library. I've read that book. Well, I've, I've, uh, that, that will never get old for me. I absolutely love that. It just really makes this all kind of worthwhile. So, Excellent. Now, uh, where can we find more info on you and your projects? Yeah, definitely. So um, we've got our own website, which is www.comics2movies.com.au. Uh, on Facebook, again, it's Comics 2 Movies. On Twitter, it's Comics, the underscore, two underscore movies. Um, and then we're also on Patreon um, as well under Comics to Movies. So um, Patreon is great. It gives you all the behind the scenes um, of the, the process of how we create all of our different projects. And um, yeah, it helps us keep creating as well. So Excellent. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time, Sean. It's been a great conversation. Really enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I encourage everyone to get these books onto your libraries because they're, they're awesome. Um, so thanks. Thank you very much for having me. I had a great time. Yeah. Cheers.